and uh, if there's an opening, I'll book out. I believe that's where it's also going to be, Michael. Here we go, first round of action. The Voice, Michael Chavello, Mark the Hammer, Gasolini, with your inside from beautiful Montego Bay in Jamaica, John Wayne Parr, the Aussie in the black. Poor cow, poor Pramica, Thailand in the white and silver. Step across the outside, Feige from Jay Tumbia. Fires off the rear hand, but that early hand artillery coming into play there from the Aussie. Poor cow, skips forward, nice tip kick to the midsection from the tie. Jay Tumbia goes to the bread basket. They trade lead kicks. The man managing to get the check in time. As Jay Dump goes to the liver section, you will see Bull Gow drop his hands, which has been his undoing of late in K1 Max, as I said, by this time already against Andre Dita last time out. The very inexperienced Andre Dita. Well, Bull Gow was doing the chicken dance on his feet. Dita almost knocked him out early on. And David, uh, good to see the promoters have uh, jumped on the problem of the logos on the ring bat, ripped them up, and uh, you know, put the fighters' priorities over their own. And they're taking those logos off to make sure that the action is first class in all these bouts. Bull Gow just seeing what Jay Tub has to offer here. Jay Tub goes to the catch and sweep to the execution here. Bull Gow for Bull Gow 220 at three of five. Jay Tub is centenary. 100 fights tonight. For Australia's greatest ever. That takedown that the Bull Gow just executed. The uh, the Thai judges are going to love that. They're going to absolutely love it. As always, Bull Gow absolutely rich strip the striated full muscles that have seen through casserole on the tie. Jay Tub looking to flank with the right hand there. Bull Gow plays down with it. Goes to the outside lead fight again. and start to throw the elbows, cut him up a bit. So uh, that's going to maybe play on his, uh, on his floor process. He wants to keep this fight at range. Buakau edging forward. JW's gun up nice and high. Chab, outside thigh kick from Buakau. Throws the knee to the upper left, regains the tie. Final few seconds here of the opening round. Been a cerebral fight so far from both of these men. I give the slight advantage, though, to Buakau for Prama because he throws round kicks off both legs and they head to the corners. Hammer, we will struggle not to show our Australian bias because we have much love for JW. But I've got to give that first round to Bull Cow Boy Pramac 10-9. Well, certainly uh, no one uh, has uh, more of a, a one-eyed view on uh, JW than myself. He's uh, been down to my gym down at the Hammers Gym there in Australia and uh, working out with the boys down there. He's a regular at the gym. But JW, I'm afraid uh, this round I'll have to uh, give the Bull Cow, especially... Uh, and I think it was the defining moment would have been that takedown. That's, you know, that's probably where uh, he's, he's initiated a lot of attacks. But uh, for me, what has made the difference is the takedown. Let's take a look how it went down there in the first round. Once again, JW just getting his leg caught and uh, Bukow taking him right down very quickly indeed and looking very confident and cocky. Bukow. JW, I feel, uh, is, is uh, not as free-flowing as I would like to see him, especially with the hands. You see the size of the calves on Bukow? How about the calves? The calves, the legs of Bukow. <laughs> There's right now. massive legs on the side. As I said earlier, the kicking power that he is renowned for Bukow. Also, there was a period, though, when Bukow was renowned for his handiwork. When he won, he said, World title. He steamrolled through everybody with his hands. It was probably the greatest K1 victory in K1 history, be it K1 heavyweights or K1 middleweights. It was just so dominant for Bull Cow. Look, I think uh, as a kid fighter, Bull Cow 07, 06, 07 version. 05, 06. Yeah, uh, right up. was uh, certainly uh, personified technique. Uh, I love his push kick. I love his front kick. He hasn't changed his fight style that much. And uh, this is perhaps something that I'm uh, interested to see. Uh, JW, of course, would study Bull Cow. would like to see him scoop out, scoop out that push kick and then answer with something. But uh, he's getting kicked with it. Well, down to John Cowan, Maxwell champion. 04, 06, 05, of course, was won by Andy Sauer, who also repeated in 07. Here we go, second round of action, unofficially first round. We give it away. Oh, Bull Cow, 10-9. Fires out a side kick, outside side kick for the lead leg, but Jake's up, checked it. Nice count kick for Bull Cow. Good left hook for the tie. You can see the sweat fly off the brow of Jake. Yeah, not getting through. A high right round kick from Buakau. Just trying to compress that carotid artery. 
Well, look how feels him with the chat. He uses it as a range find of that real leg round kick and again slammed into the other left side of the carcass of John Wayne Barr. The Aussie oh, digs with the uppercut trying to put the chin through the top of the head. Jay Dub, as the hammer said, needs to close the gap, needs to get on the inside and work those succulent hands. Ten knockouts, ten wins. No! As a pro boxer for JW. He was the man who outboxed the boxer by Zambides in Melbourne in May. He needs our left hook, high right round kick, good combination there, Hammer. Good combination, and I noticed that Bookhouse starting to pick up that the JW props off his, uh, on his rear leg and leaves his front leg up. So he's starting to grab that, le that front leg, that knee leg, and, uh, and uh, slipping no! the clinch and push down. So what JW needs no! to sort of move out of that, again, you see him just popping on, the, on his right leg and, and poking with the left. He even, even needs to, to commit with the push kick or not lift that lead leg off the ground at all. Oh, nice counter again. We have the back of the one-two from JW and just counter struck him off the hands. It pulled out, signs up the Aussie against the ropes, tries to draw a knee for the midsection. Referee breaks him. Leave a shot from Bourkow. High right round kick. He's a right hand from JW. Turning elbow from JW. Couldn't get through. His right hand between the eyes of the tie. Inside the final 30 seconds of the second round of five. Oh, oh smack back with a shot in. Overhand elbow from JW. Didn't get past the forearm. That was a beautiful right hand earlier on from the Australian. Well, this is, uh, I think, the strategy that uh, John Wayne Park needs to employ. Hands merging to elbows. Look for a cut with the elbow. He just needs to uh, be firing a lot quicker. Down in that round, that could uh, just lean that round uh, to Bukal. Close around, potentially a draw, potentially uh, going to Bukal. Yeah, you're going to get splinters in your backside, some of the side, mate. Give me a result, who are you calling it to? Write it down in your little score card there, but I can understand you're writing your hand. <laughs> who are you scoring it to? I'm going to go even on that round. He's going to start to throw some more elbows in this coming third round, and uh, I think that's a definite must for him. JW trying to crack through with the elbows in the second, and not successful in landing one, but they're great to see when the fighters employ all eight weapons on Muay Thai. Final instructions. Bull Cow first to emerge off his stool here in centering. JW a little slower off the mark as he received a lot more instruction in the corner. 10 9, first round we've given it to Bull Cow. 10 all, second round came JW. Certainly does the scorecard, or at least our scorecard, Hammer, as we go to third of five. He certainly doesn't look to have the energy uh, that, that had him amped in Melbourne, uh, Australia, fighting Mike Zambides, but then again, he had you know, 2,500 people on his side, so fighting in a foreign land and uh, against a very tough opponent. He's uh, looking uh, to be a hard road ahead, a hard night at the office for John Wayne Park. Step across, the kick from Jake Duffy. Oh, with the right hand, the big kibosh! And Paul Cal Wara turned him around and counted with a right hand of his own. That was more like it from Jake Duffy, but how well did Paul Cal take that shot hammer? He ate the glove. And again, he wears the right hand, Paul Cal. Crossing now. elbow from the tie, and again trying to chop the ear off of Jake Duffy. Tough, tough stuff here from Paul Cal. Jake Duffy finally launching a heavy artillery here in the third. Locked down knee, strike, knee punt, knee guard from uh, John Wayne Park. Uh, Walk out, forced to lick the leather here in the third round so far. Slammed into the oh, other right one. Okay. Double jab right hand from Jay Dubber. They tie up and Tango back in front of our commentary position. Great third round here. Jay Dubby's 100th career fight. And no one's been going through his mind for a long, long time. He will be opponent number 100 as he does the lean back and tries to counter with the right hand. When he found out it was going to be Borgau, he was absolutely elated. Well, certainly uh, all the uh, people from Queensland and Australia, and especially Boonchu Jim, Wayne's Jim, will be uh, on the edge of their seats for this one. Willing, trying to will a win to the Aussie. And uh, Borgau is looking a little confident, but he gets a little bit more of a blue tinge on his head, wearing the, the, uh, the gloves of uh, John Wayne Park. Borgau going for that liver again, and he digs down with the left hand, finds a tip into the big section, steps up and locks up the the tyre. Nope. Straight That's a big breath as Jake Dumbia crossing elbow again, looking to shoot. 
Cut the teeth off of Boogau. Inside thigh kick from Jada. Boogau goes to the outside lead thigh. Just checks him off the front kick. Tries it. Snake in the left hook again to the tie. And a good bread and butter combination. Jab outside thigh kick from Jada. Body shot from Boogau. Jada just needed to turn that right hand a little more. Goes for a crossing elbow off the lead arm to the Australian. Boogau looking to force him against the ropes here and work that. The right hand. Final 10 seconds of this round. And Boogau go clip the maniac and just steal it here with a final technique. Oh, into the midsection. End of the round. JW pumps the fist into the air hammer, but do you think the Australian got it? I think it was certainly uh, the best round of the night for him and uh, landing some good shots with the hands. John Wayne Parr, a good close round yet again. And uh, I'll lean the way of Wayne Parr on that round. I think uh, he landed the cleaner shots with the hand department, answered the, the low leg kicks, and uh, it was a lot more of an even round with, uh, with Wayne landing uh, more striking by the hands. He's happy and we're only three again. This is unnatural. It doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> Let's take a look how it down. We've both got it. Going the way of JW there in the third. It's a long ride and I'm sure things will change. <laughs> <laughs> again, the rampaging John Wayne Parr walks forward and that is the game plan that he needs to employ if he's going to rattle Hook out because at kicking range, at distance, it's going to be Bukow with those long legs, those beautiful push kicks that he's going to be working and overlapping. Bukow throws a round kick and a double round kick off that the rear leg. A lot of power. For those of you watching this one, do not underestimate the power in those round kicks because uh, guests have likened the tight round kick to the impact of a, a car accident. So uh, these guys' are, bodies are well conditioned to take that impact. Don't be receiving instruction in his corner as he looks for his 73rd career win. Bukow for from us looking for his 100. Let's have a look at the Muay Thai power here. Leg kick from Bull to the lead leg of JW as he tries to bring it up to check it. They trade leg kicks. JW just pounces on him. There's the right hand. Beautiful done. Beautifully done. Now we're sort of getting into the latter rounds. The lactic acid will be kicking into the muscles. The, uh, the guy's legs and arms will be feeling very heavy indeed. And uh, it really becomes a mental battle now. You have to put all of that out of your mind and just focus at the job at hand. And, uh, this is where the fight game becomes a little bit more uh, mental or spiritual and less physical. Fourth round of five, Michael Chavello, Mark the Hammer, Gaston, and the Hearing Zone from Montego Bay, champions of champions too. If you're enjoying the folks wherever you're watching, great to have you. Cracking one of that leap thigh of Borgau. Throws the right hand as a little punch, then the left round kick this straight up. Trying to mix it up a little here, the Australian. Good start here from John Wayne Park. Edges out of the way of the high right round kick of Bullock out. And again, just goes by the lead leg, trying to tenderize the quadriceps area. Oh, no. Down catches the kicking leg. Can't execute a sweep, hooks her at elbow, then fires away to the lower left rib cage. Three punch combination, not landing for JW. Steps across and hits the back leg. Timing from the Aussie. Well, John Wayne Park needs to look confident. He needs to maintain his balance and poise. Because again, the judges will be looking at that. They look at aggression and they look at how much balance uh, and Muay Thai uh, technique you exhibit. If you're a little bit loose, a little bit untidy, even though you're scoring, it doesn't always uh, reflect on the judge's scorecard. We've got to remember also the judges are predominantly Thais scoring uh, one of the Thai greats. So they're going to be uh, looking after their boy, perhaps. Oh, nice high right round kick from Bullock. Now then drills the knee to the sooner of JW. Just to try that big Bob Marley banner. If you go anywhere in Jamaica here, handle it out here in Bob Marley. It's everywhere. Look out, just edging forward. JW flanks with the back end. Goes to the inside lead from the tie. Look out, nice and tight. High right round. Come up with the shoot around the back of the neck again. I'll tell you what, I'm just surprised I haven't replaced the tie music with uh, a bit of reggae. It's absolutely <laughs> everywhere. There's a steel drum from the beaches. Look out, comes forward again. JW counters and locks him up. Who will get the better exchange in the clinch here? Count for the tank down. Jane Dubs, the referee has to fry these two men off of each other. Oh. Let's look from Jane Dubs. Look out, looking down at Jane Dubs' foot here. Setting himself, perhaps with that right hand, perhaps with another real leg round here. Now it's uh, Jane Dubs that's stalking Hook out, Hook out, moving back. So uh, Jane Dubs is starting to turn the aggressor meter up. And that, that's exactly what he has to do. He's got to pick up the aggression level. He's got to start to dominate and go bombing. JW. So far for mine, uh, Booker hasn't landed anything of uh, any great scoring capabilities. I tell you what, John Wayne Park. Uh, one guard, one guard, six, that one ten nine. So I've got him losing the first round. I draw on the second round, the third and fourth, going the way of JW, the Australian in the lead by the slightest of margins. On our actual score, you agree at 10 9 now there for JW? Certainly, I'm just going to play devil's advocate here and uh, reassess the scorecard now. The first, the first round definitely Booker. The, uh, the third and fourth definitely Wayne Park. For me, it's a second round that's in question. Even though we gave it to Wayne Park, I'm, I'm putting uh, my, I suppose, my thought process aside for a moment and trying to get myself in the uh, in the J 
judges' mind space. I believe they could have and may have given that second round to Bookout. So if that's the case, that's two rounds apiece, which makes this last round uh, the definitive round and the one that's going to be up for the up for the taking. Shane Tubia, who we definitely thought won the third and fourth round with combinations like these you're seeing in centering, was certainly a much more aggressive start from the Australian at the beginning of the fourth round than it had been for the previous three. Poor cow. Taking some big breaths, we can see the red corner in front of our commentary position. Get some smelling salts there, Bubble Cow. Just trying to clear the, the nasal say. passages yeah. and uh, get his breathing right. Certainly, uh, one thing I've noticed already uh, early in the night is that the fighters, the, the, the environment and the uh, the air here, the altitude, I think has taken its toll. All these fighters are supremely fit, Michael, but they're looking a little gassed early. Just to give you folks a little bit of uh, uh, what's happening here around the ring as far as weather goes, it's really not that humid here tonight. There's a beautiful breeze blowing in from behind us, so it's coming in pretty much from Bubble Cow's red corner, blowing across towards Wayne's blue corner. It's flowing in off the Caribbean Ocean, which is just behind us. Uh, beautiful temperature. It's actually quite cool with that breeze and not that humid. So, no really adverse conditions here for our finals tonight. And as the Hammer said, all have known a lot about this card and all have trained up an absolute treat for it as we kick off the final round of action here. Well, they picked, they picked this one up at a lightning pace to start. I think both their corners know that this could be the defining round. Catch us with the ball. Oh, it's oh, a up yet. Back to center in. Cracks away that outside lead by again. You can see Bull Cow drop the left hand to catch the kick. Good work the counter off it. Good leg speed from Jake Tabak. Continually cracking away to that lead by a Bull Cow. Someone now get the lead there. You switch that off and use it off the back stance. Nice defense from Conway Hart again with that tight guard. Spit the ball off the fence nicely on his lead side. We said how last time he was last but he said he outdrops the boxer. At the moment here in the final round, he is out kicking the kicker. I right round kick from Bull Cow. Checks the low kick. In turn, needs exactly the same. All tied up again, gets into the ring. Referee has to pry them apart. Don't forget under WFC rules, you get five seconds in the finish to the end. If not, the referee will break and restart. Straight up, you're getting very light on the ball of his front feet as most Muay Thai fighters do. They'll flick it out. He uses a great spine with the tip kicks or the front kicks. Skips forward again. He's looking to throw the right hand here. Watch it come down the tube. There it is. Big kill by Shot Chase Tapia. Just one hand back. Let it go. Ball cow to a quick count of his teeth after that one. Slightly blue tinged head now. Hook out via the leather. Don't wait past the last. That lip after that one. Have to suck it in. <laughs> As they just turn go. Put a bit of a side headlock there from Bullocow. This has been, I feel, Wayne Barr's round again. Good high right round here from Bullocow, but he's throwing out the one shots here. Is Bullocow, whereas JW is throwing more combinations. Finds the mark with a good one shot. Locks up the tie against the ropes. Draws a little knee under the right ribcage. Well, just over 30 seconds to go. And uh, time is of the essence here for both fighters. Bull Cow going for a waist clinch. It's a bit of a waltz into centering. And uh, just wait when that 10 second clacker hits that uh, both of these fighters will open up, no doubt. It's not a clacker, it's a hot Jamaican <laughs> girl absolutely slamming it into the can. This is right. Get yourself in position now. Oh, 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 oh. He went for the gas oh, maker to open up what we call the money box on top of the head of Bull Cow. It's not what Bull Cow wants with that K1 fight in two and a half weeks' time. You've got to wonder at this stage if that is going through Bull Cow's mind. If maybe he's not opening up as much as we thought he may have. Does a bit of quick evasion, gets out of the way of the round, kicks a J Tub. In the fight, Hammer and both men pump their fists into the air as I give the final round at 10 9 to John Wayne Park. I'm going to go with you on that one and I'm going to look at uh, the scores in reflection. Give the first two rounds. It's like Devil's Advocate here. Give the first two rounds to book out. Definitely the last three have to go to the Aussie John Wayne Park. Okay. If you do that, Hammer, it's 49 48 to JW. On my scorecard, I've got a 49 47 to JW. Either way, Either I've got way. to JW. Either way, it's, it's got to be the JW. Now, Hammer, my question is. It's not the I feel the book out really slowed down after the second round. What do you think happened to the book out? He didn't seem to have the same crack, the same pace, the same aggression that he had in the opening two rounds. So have a look at some of the action of JW hunting down book out here in the final round. Well, I just uh, I feel book out didn't stay with the game plan that he had before in the first and second round. You know, certainly in the clinches where he's comfortable, but I think that that the topic we spoke of earlier, that his concern not to get cut with elbows, made him stay at range, made him want to stay out of that clinch for fear of getting cut with an elbow because of his upcoming fight. John Wayne Parr perhaps exploited that, that opportunity, tried to get into the clinch as we're seeing now, and uh, perhaps that would have been uh, where he should have worked a lot more. But not to say uh, he's done anything wrong at all in this fight, JW, apart from the fact that I feel he probably started a little slow. Uh, but he did finish stronger, he did let his hands flow. You know the decision in the red corner. Oh, poor girl, take it. Though he is now 
now the world's WMC junior middleweight champion. He is again a look at how it went down for Bulacal for Brummer. Throwing a knee to the midsection there on JW, just 